All right, great. I think we're we're there. So I'm going to get go ahead and get started. I will share my screen so people can see the deck. That would be helpful, right? Uh, let's see. Sh present. Well. All right, share, make sure I'm sharing the right screen. All right, so hopefully everyone's seen our title slide, Driving Accountability and Empowering Others. We're going to have Tanya Blackwood as our facilitator today. For those of you who haven't been in following these webinars this year, my name is Jeff Anderson. I'm a program director here at UNC Charlotte in the School of Professional Studies. and. Uh, we're excited to bring you another, I'll call it another chapter in our ongoing story about how to engage your workforce. Uh, the first half of the year, we were all about communications and dealing with communication challenges. This this second half of this year, we're, we've been talking a lot about engaging your team and leadership and uh, culture change. Um, so we talked about account, you know, we're talking about accountability and empowering others uh, today. So um as, as in every session, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. These are meaty topics. These are things that you uh, folks had asked for, um, you and others who have attended webinars in the past. Uh, these are some of the topics that, that uh, we, we've asked you for ideas and, and we will ask again today. I'll put that out there too. We're gonna ask you for ideas again today. Um, and at the end of every webinar, we want your thoughts on what else we could be presenting from the university that would be helpful in your careers, your jobs, your professions, um, whatever that might be. So uh, we've got like 130 plus topics out there that, we, that we've that we got content already developed on. So um, from a business perspective, so lots and lots of things we can be talking about. Um, but with that being said, let me just jump ahead. Um, Make sure that I can jump ahead. Well, there we go. Hey, that works. Technology, great. All right. So a few little housekeeping rules before we get started. I turn it over to Tanya. Um, and Tanya and I are going to be doing, you're going to hear me maybe a little bit more today, but Tanya and I, uh, this is a, this, you know, empowerment in particular, employee engagement. These are things that Tanya and I both share passion for. Um, and so you'll you'll hear maybe a little bit of both of us. Well, not a little bit of me, a lot of Tanya. How about that? Because Tanya's got a lot of a lot of experience, a lot of depth here. Um, but before I do any turning over, uh, passing the baton, so to speak, just some of the rules in, of engagement for those of you that haven't been with us before. I just want to let you know we do because of the number of people that are with us today. We do tend we try to keep the mics muted automatically and cameras off. Um, if you do want to be unmuted, and we are going to be asking you for comments throughout today's session, um, you can uh, ask to be unmuted, and we would definitely love to hear from you. We'll also be wanting to hear from you via chat. That's a much easier way, especially uh, for so many people on here. Uh, so use the chat function. Um, besides Tanya and myself, we have Michael Utzman here, um, who's actually our director of our marketing team, and he is helping produce today's session and all the sessions this year. So Michael is here. If you have any issues with the Zoom today, uh, using the chat, uh, getting unmuted to respond to a question or uh, ask a question, um, Michael can help you with that. So you can send him a message through the chat as well, or the, uh, you know, the uh, click on his name and you can send him a message. Um, we're going to be done in an hour today. I always want to be a good steward of your time. So it's a, just, a, uh, we've got about just over 50 minutes. Uh, and we will most likely be done a little early, but one, as always, that's going to be driven partially by you and what kind of questions and engagements we have, because we do want this to be an interaction and not just a lecture. So um, some, we might go up until the hour, but uh, we'll try to get through the content as, as expeditiously as we can. And if we have more, we have to talk more about a certain area, because that's where people's interest is, then that, that's great, because that's the goal here is to make sure you're getting something out of this webinar. So after the webinar, um, we'll also be sending you a link to some follow-up resources to a recording of this today's session. Um, and uh, so some additional learning. So we've got, I think I've got some uh, PowerPoint, I mean, not some, um, some additional articles, resources, videos uh, that you can look at that are on this topic. Um, and we'll be sending you a survey once again, as I mentioned earlier, give us your thoughts. What did we, what can we do better? What topics can we bring to you in the future? So uh, we're in the process right now of, of working out our 2023 lineup. 
Um, so a whole nother year of programming is getting ready to be rolled out to you. Uh, I think we'll probably have it finalized in the next month. So uh, maybe at next month's webinar, uh, we'll be able to roll out um, the, the lineup of this coming up. So that being said, let me move on to the next slide. There we go. Learning objectives. So is that the, yeah, that's the next one. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I want uh, Tanya to start talking, but I'll just say today, you know, it's all about accountability and, and engage and empowerment today of your workforce, of yourselves and the people you work with. So regardless of what your role is in the organization, this is something that you can apply, um, whether you're a manager, you're an HR, you're just your uh, individual contributor, whatever you consider your position, um, there's, there's something for you in this webinar. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between accountability and responsibility. Uh, accountability can be simple, and simple there is all capitalized because it's an acronym we're going to use to kind of talk on some key points of how to work through that and how to empower, how to hold people accountable, and put things, systems, and processes in place to make this all sustainable. Because uh, one and done, you know, might save the day, but if you really want change, you really want systemic change, you want something that can really make a difference and actually deliver some bottom line results over time, it's it's got to be longer, it's got to be sustainable, it's got to be something that it's not taking heroic efforts to do. And that's the simple model is, is going to give us a framework to talk through that today. Uh, and then finally, how to build a culture of accountability and empowerment. Once again, this is not about a, uh, there will be things you can use today, I'll say, that you can use right away. Um, but some things take sometimes change takes a little while and when we're talking about accountability this is a big topic this is a meaty thing this is something that people get a little it's it's both it's one of those things where people get very i'll say very uh passionate about on both sides of the coin where like they want more accountability in organizations i know it you know when i've worked with corporations for years and years that's one of the top things is we people don't get held accountable in organizations but at the same time when when that finger's pointed back at us you know how, how do we feel about that and is that does it do we feel like we've been given the tools and empowered to be you know if we're going to be held accountable for something we want to be, make sure we have feel like we have the control that we need or the tools or the levers we can pull to make things actually happen and deliver so accountability kind of swings both ways and we're going to get into that that's why today is about accountability and empowerment and um so that being said, and let me just say a quick two seconds because I've been w talking way too much now about Tanya Tanya has been uh, She's had a number of jobs over the years. I'm not even going to try to go through her old resume. I would encourage you, follow her on LinkedIn. Let me just say that if you want to see the whole, the full spiel of, of Tanya and who she is and all the awesome stuff she's done over the years, right now, I'll say, you know, she's she's got her own organization once in a while. She's a life coach. She's worked on employee empowerment, employee engagement. She's worked on a recruiting. So in HR roles, there's been a lot of different things. She's worn lots of different hats. She still does wear multiple hats. Um, she actually works at one of my former organizations now, a company that some of you might have heard of, Center for Creative Leadership. Um, and so um, in addition to the university, she does work with us, obviously, here, too. Um, so lots of different hats. Bottom line is she is an expert about this topic, and that's one of the reasons why I asked her to, to come and speak with you guys today uh, on this topic, because uh, she has a lot to say on this, a lot of depth of knowledge. So um, I, as I said earlier, this is the tip of the iceberg, and as always, Use this opportunity to ping Tanya, ask questions, follow her on, on LinkedIn and ask her questions later on too. It's, this is not a one and done. Learning is not a, an event. This is a process. So um, that being said, Tanya, I'll let, I'll drive today because we're sharing my deck. So give me the uh, the nod or the, uh, you know, the, the, the whatever signal I'm you want to give me. I'm here. <laughs> yes. And I'm happy to be here. Just put that in the chat. Very happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't think of a better uh, pilot, co-pilot, um, you know, somebody to uh, run through the woods with on this, this, because when you were speaking, I was saying to myself, yeah, we could kind of get in the woods a little bit on that word accountability, because it's very sensitive to some people, you know, um, and that's why partnering it, I think it's so smart, partnering it with empowerment. Um, and putting that, so to speak, twist on it makes it um, it makes it a little more digestible. Uh, Michael, thanks for keeping us honest and and working and uh, moving forward in all of this. Uh, 
Jeff has decided, well, I asked him and he decided to drive for me today. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. Uh, Cause you know, there's some days, Jeff, when you just need your license taken away. <laughs> yeah, this would be that day, one of those days for me. So welcome everyone. Um, Jeff pretty much did a great job on talking about the learning objectives. And what I really want to do, because he spent time there, um, I don't want to spend too much time there. I want us to jump into the meat of things so that um, we'll have enough time because we have a lot, we have a lot to cover. All right. So you kind of get the understanding. And we're going to walk through all of it. I think the, the best place to start, Jeff, would probably be, let's jump down to that accountability slide. Let's just jump right in, right? Because accountability, when you look at the definition, accountability is the state of being accountable. It's re being reliable and answerable, not just to yourself, but to others, right? Um, and People don't separate that quite often. They think accountability and it's a one-way street, but you have to be accountable to the recipients, but don't forget self. So let me give you the plain definition in, in, in regular words. The person who's accountable is the recipient of the consequences of an action. A party doesn't need to be directly responsible for the action or the consequence to be held accountable responsible, or in this case, meaning the cause of that action. But that's why I slipped that little word self in there as well. Because what, I don't know if COVID's taught any of you, but COVID has definitely taught me, you need to be more accountable to self. You have to answer to yourself as well at in your professional and your personal life it's going to impact how you respond and be accountable to others when you're more accountable to yourself. So let's go ahead and move to the next slide, Jeff. Our accountability and responsibility, the same thing. That's a really good question because a lot of times individuals, they kind of interchange the words, um, accountability and responsibility. Um, so, First, I want to ask you, I'm going to do a two-prong question, and maybe some of you will feel comfortable enough to come off a mute or just raise your hand, and, and we'll do a shout-out. I think Jeff, Jeff can see everybody, mm -hmm. um, but come off mute or put it in the chat. What does accountability mean to you? And do you think accountability and responsibility are the same thing? You could tackle one or both of those. Let's talk about it for a minute. Who's the first brave soul? All right, I see an answer in chat. Sometimes, uh, Sarah. Sarah's saying, sometimes I struggle with these in racy charts. To be honest with you. yeah, yeah, racy can yeah. be helpful, and it can also be doesn't always add the clarity that we want. <laughs> Yeah, that is so true. And we will talk yeah. about Racy later. We will. Yep. Janita, yes, they are different. And the same person can be held to both or either. Exactly right. I'm loving that you guys are dropping in these thoughts. Um, Sarah, that's good. To me, accountability has more weight. It's the person mm -hmm. whose name and paycheck is on the line. That's good. That's good. I like that. Jessica, they're different. To be accountable, you also have to take responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever met anybody that wanted the accountability but refused to take responsibility for the results? Question of the day. Accountability means more ownership, like additional checks and balances are in place. Yeah, Jeff, I would say they, there's attention to detail with the accountability mm -hmm. part too, as well as the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They're actually not the same. You guys are right. 
you may be responsible for something, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you follow through. Robin, that's great. Yeah, I'm loving these comments. Let, let me jump here to the next slide so we can mm -hmm. dig in a little bit alongside with what you guys are saying. Yep. You know, accountability versus responsibility. It, ref, you know, responsibility refers to the obligation, right? So the obligation to perform the task or comply with the rule. Accountability implies answerability for the outcome of the task or the process. So responsibility is task or project focused, but accountability is results focused. So let's dig in, let's dig in. Jump for me, will you Jeff, to the next one? These are some really good points. They go hand in hand, Amy, you're absolutely right. Jeff, did you wanna drop in anything? Right now, I'll just say this is something I have always struggled with from the standpoint of both, you know, from a manager standpoint and from a, um, contributor standpoint so yeah when I was a contributor I was all I was, I was told I was responsible for things and I it was it was never explained to me I was like well you know am I accountable am I responsible so and they, the racy chart someone brought that up earlier the racy chart actually helped me understand that but I I agree I can't I don't want to lead too far into the, <laughs> into what's coming yeah but, yeah but it's but accountability absolutely that's that's the bottom line at the you know that's the person I, the way I'd always looked at it is that's the person in the end who who's uh, to use the analogy the, whose butts on the line you know in the yeah. end the, the buck stops with this person they're the ones accountable and whether they choose to delegate the responsibility or maintain or hold the responsibility or just you know kind of share it responsibility is getting the stuff done accountability is the one who has to make sure that it actually has been done has whatever that. Yes, that's it right there. That's a great breakdown right there. Accountability is the person that has to make sure ultimately they're responsible. They've got to make sure that everything gets done and you can delegate the responsibility out, but ultimately it sits with you. You are, as we say back in the day, I might be dating myself, but you are the, the big kahuna. You right. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, you're the king uh, or the queen of the project. It's all gonna roll back to you, right? So can a person be accountable and not responsible? Absolutely, I, mm -hmm. I mentioned that earlier. They can be accountable and not responsible if they've delegated it out. Um, let's say for an example, an intern might be responsible for a specific task but the intern's manager will be held accountable if anything results from what the intern has done, right? Mm -hmm. We see that all the time on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> For any of the Grey's Anatomy fans out there, Jeff, let's jump ahead. Yep, absolutely. Even when I, and so, I'll add that just even when I was in a, working with agencies out on the client side, I was responsible for hiring other people to do it just because... And, but I was still held accountable for what their work. So I couldn't, if they didn't do their job, I don't get a pass because I'm still accountable for their work that they're responsible for doing for me. So it's exactly, it, it works with a vendor client relationship as well. That kind of dynamic. I like the Janita said, my tail is on the line. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yep. yes. Ultimately that's what it boils down to. So mm -hmm. let's do a quick poll. Do you feel people are consistently held accountable at your organization? Do some personal, some self-awareness. Um, is that the case for you where you are? Ooh, yeah. it's a battle. It's, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I love watching this go. I want to see if, if they're going to surprise me with some different results than I expected. <laughs> no, no, right? All right, we'll give it. Awesome. 80, We're almost, almost there. there. We're almost yep. at 100%, guys. A couple, a few more people. Got it. We'll give you another second. All right. So, there Michael, we, go. we we get stopped it. All right, so 56% of you said no. You don't feel like your people are consistently held accountable at your organization. 35% yes, and 9% don't know. And that that don't know is 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 real. That's that is true. Yeah. That's 
lot of it's, times you don't know yeah. what happens outside of when outside of your 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 view of, of your perspective of what's going on you don't know if you're if your boss is accountable for them did he get held accountable in the end you don't know or and that could be good good or bad did you so i, I won't go yeah. any further than that there's i got lots to say about that no you're right stop. about that though <laughs> you're right because a lot of times um let's see did we share results yet with everyone um okay let's I think, I think people can see it. Okay, great. So, but I'll, let I me, I'll, that, I'll, I'll go on to the next slide though. So you can see that if that's all right, then. Oh yeah, they can, we got a, a thumbs up meaning I think they can see it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times with that, some folks don't know the big picture, Jeff. So they don't know, you know, the don't know part, like you said, is pretty real. Yep. They don't know the big pictures, so there's no way of them knowing who's responsible for what. They just know about their small, I'm supposed to put this key in this place, and mm -hmm. that's all I have to do, and hope and pray that the big plan gets finished. And that's a reality, you know? Um, now, an impact on accountability void. Let me share this with you. The Partners in Leadership conducted a workplace accountability study, and they asked, what percentage of respondents do you think they said would rank improving the ability to hold others accountable in an effective way as one of the top leadership development skills in their organizations? Um, what do you guys think? What do you think the percentage would be? What's the percentage of the respondents do you think they said would rank improving the ability to hold others accountable in an effective way in their organization. And just to be clear, this is not there. You're already doing it. This is, this is like a top, what are your leaders in your organization? I'll put it into your context of where you guys are working now. What percentage of you would say that this is a top 10 thing that your, your leaders in your org need to do. And that's essentially a non-scientific way of saying what they what the scientific study asked. What they said, <laughs> yes. All right. So we got a 65%, 63, 100% need to do it. Yeah, well, I don't. I, Linda, I agree with you there. 100% probably do need to do that better than either they need to do it and start doing it or they need to do it to get it better at it. Yeah. 80% plus one for Linda. <laughs> uh 75 percent 70 percent all right well we're seeing a majority i'm not seeing anybody say no this is not a priority where they're you know a 20 percent response rate which is consistent with what the research is telling us which is oops right here 91 percent that can you believe that so who was that that said 100 percent? you you weren't Linda. pie in the sky you weren't pie in the sky at all um it, it's crazy. 91% of respondents said they would rank improving the ability to hold others accountable in an effective way as one of the top leadership development needs of their organization. 91% of all the organizations out there are failing in this area. That's like the negative way to put it, but English, right? So mm -hmm. it's an area of growth would be the positive way to say it, right? Area of How opportunity. Do you guys be, yeah, area of opportunity. I like that, Jeff. Sounds about right, huh, Janita? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys for the feedback on that. I, I That struck me. I couldn't believe that one. But then when it's, I sat and thought about it, it makes perfect sense because nobody's doing it, right, Jeff? Well, it, it tells me the grass is not greener on the other side, that er, this yeah. is a challenge for every organization struggles with this, no matter the who's in leadership, no matter if you're a tiny organization, a big one, everybody struggles with this. And there's so much that comes from holding, holding others accountable in the organization. There are positive outcomes from that, right? Um, Jeff, let's go to the next slide. We call it an accountable culture. So when you're in an accountable culture, the job, form, the job performance is improved, right? The employees participate, they get involved more, which leads to more employee engagement. There's a heightened commitment to work, the work at hand. You're just ready to do whatever is given to you because you know there's accountability involved. 
There's added creativity and innovation. People are going to be listening to my thoughts and ideals, right? They're more engaged and a higher employee morale and job satisfaction. Those I can see so easily when you hold folks accountable, um, when you know that things are going to happen a certain way, there's a level of security that you have. What are some other positive outcomes that um, you guys can see from holding others accountable? I love that, Linda. Drop the mic. I love it. <laughs> Yes, yes. With greater morale comes retention. Yes, that's that's right. Yeah, you're willing to work on teams more. Most definitely. Um, you're willing to do a lot more. Yep. Clarity and focus. Sarah, that's perfect. That That's so right. Um, it's easier to be excited when you know where you're going, but it's even more then I'm making up words now, Jeff, more easy, more easier <laughs> <laughs> that to works. be excited when you trust. I haven't seen that word yet, but trust when you trust that your leadership is holding everyone accountable or everyone is, you're, you know, you can lean into the expectations of the organization a little easier, you know? So Anyone else, any other ideals of outcomes? We have some really good ones. Retention, teamwork, focus, clarity. Excellent. Let's go to the next slide. Awesome. So if we break it down, <laughs> always an acronym for everything, right? If we break it down to its simplest form, Let's say accountability is simple. Accountability is setting expectations. It's inviting commitment, measuring results, providing feedback. It links to consequences. And it causes you to evaluate, evaluate effectiveness. So, if you keep these steps in mind, then ironically, what is that black cloud basically turns into a nice, beautiful circle. The sky clears, the clouds part. I'm getting a little corny now, Jeff. It's time to change the slide. <laughs> <laughs> let's dig into let's dig into each one, right? So setting expectations. Let's Let's um, imagine how setting expectations conversation would go. Let, let's, do, let's do an example, okay? Let's say that you're beginning a meal, you're trying to get it right, you go out to eat, all right? So the server says, good evening, glad to have you with us tonight. I'll be your server. Let me begin by asking you just a few questions to be of the greatest service to you tonight, I'm going to ask you not only how you like your food cooked, but how you like it served. So you're sitting in stunned silence at this point because no server has ever spoken to you like this before, right? So the server says, if you're in a conversation, do you still want me to interrupt you to see how things are going? So here's your first question, right? They're drawing a boundary they're setting parameters. This is great. So you say no, but I can signal you in some way to let you know if I need you. It's kind of like uh, I'm asking a question of the server. The server says, of course, I will keep an eye out and watch out for that. How about filling your glass? Should I just keep it full? And you say, no, I'll signal you when I need it. And then the server says, Okay, anything else you would like? You say, yes, I'd like to get through the appetizers more quickly and not wait an hour for the meal to be served. <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we see here, Jeff's laughing because obviously this customer has issues, right? <laughs> okay, so... 
the server being a positive nature, right, says, okay, no problem, sir. I will move that part of the meal along. Now, you say, is this a dream? Now, it seems like a dream because this is not normal conversation when you go out to eat, right? It just kind of happens. Um, no one sets expectations and parameters and boundaries. Uh, we just kind of dive in. Now, you might not establish the exact same expectation for how you want to be served, but that's the whole point. In working in your organization and with your teams, what we do is we too often take the meal service approach to holding others accountable. So think about it. We don't clearly set out expectations. We surprise people when it's over with an evaluation of how well they did guessing what we want for one and that's not the most effective way to hold somebody accountable what do you what do you guys think about that what do you think about that do we just dive in the same way at work oh i love brent brown robin yes clear yeah. is kind yeah i like that one too nay i always say your name wrong brene brown you were gonna. You had some thoughts, Jeff. I'd love to hear from you guys on this. Oh, well, good to call yourself out, Sarah. That's good. Self awareness is really important, you know. Um, and sometimes we have to go back and revisit things. Definitely. Now, Jeff has us here at the next one, the connection between expectations and accountability. Now, when you grasp the inseparable connection between expectations and accountability, you'll begin to discover something. You'll discover the secret to holding other people accountable. The very process of managing those expectations is the act of holding other people accountable. And it's the soft approach to doing that, performing this act in what we call the respectful, positive, principled way, not only delivers results, but guess what? It simultaneously raises both individual and organizational morale. People are happier, right? They don't feel spoken at or down to. You've reached a consensus together, right? Sarah said, these days we all move so fast that we don't clarify things as we should. And, and that's right. We do. It's a microwave society. But successfully holding others accountable to deliver on expectations and doing it in a way that makes others feel good about it, that takes an effort and it takes skill. Even though it says it's simple, it has to be what I call intentional. Doing it well yields a predictable result because you know people will respond positively and favorably when you, I guess my way of speaking, when you come at them a certain way, it will bring a different result, taking away any mystery, confusion about what people are expected to do, which leads to frustration. So, you know, in other words, it's about helping employees move from point A to point B and a key piece that makes Welcome that happen. Enter your meeting ID. By Oops. A good way to make sure that that happens and make sure that it works is guess what? The other word that's in the title of this, and that's empowering your employee to take approved actions to deliver results. They're empowered to carry out those expectations because you've laid the land down, you've laid it down already. Right? So they are empowered to do whatever they want, but trying to be, trying to replicate the results that we need to identify for them. Right? Is everything okay? Jeff's audio went out. He's trying to reconnect. So just keep on going. Oh, okay, no problem. 
So once again, guys, um, this is where expectation comes into play. If you set expectations on what people are going to be held accountable for doing, then guess what? Um, they're going to be empowered to do it and to achieve the results that you're setting people up to do. You're setting them up for success, right? So with clear job expectations for what they're accountable for and what they're empowered to do, here's what's going to happen. They're going to understand what is important and what they should be doing. So there's not that doubt that sometimes overtakes us, right? They're going to understand why they're doing their work. They're going to have a sense of purpose. So there's not this blind march, right? They're going to know how, what they're doing is working and when to ask for support. So they're going to recognize when they need improvement, when things may be going awry, right? But if they don't have any of those parameters in place, then that's not the case. They're all over the place. And guess what? The person that is overall responsible and accountable is going to turn in an all over the place project as well. Not good. Not good at all. So I think, yes, Jeff is moving along with me here. Think of accountability as a partnership. Three steps to effectively holding others accountable, right? So we're going to frame the expectation and give it meaning. We're going to make it repeatable. And we're going to set by whens. So that's time, right? Setting an expectation. Let me just talk about each of these for a quick second. And um, Michael and Jeff, you're my uh, time police, okay? Because I can talk. So <laughs> stay on me for that. Change the slide, do something, let me know. All right. So when you sit down with someone to create an expectation, make sure that you framed it up in a way that clearly defines what's expected of them. That's what that means, right? And when you're talking about make it repeatable, make the expectation memorable by making it repeatable using, you know, an acronym, an abbreviation, a rhyme, something that will help them improve, you know, help them remember, right? So it says that, well, research says that making something rhyme makes it stick more, right? So let's say we want to improve sales by 25% by the end of the second quarter. So you would agree with your team, 25% by Q2, 25 by Q2. It's simple. It's easy to remember, right? Now the by when, set the by whens. When setting an expectation of accountability, mutually agree on dates and times. It's one thing to tell somebody, okay, you know what? Let's wrap that project up on October 20th. And one of the key leaders is looking for answers that morning when the per people that are working on the deliverables thought they had until 5 p.m. Time is very important. So dates and time. The greater the expectation, the more critical it becomes to take these three steps. You know, um, they require great expectations, require great beginnings. And you can establish those effectively when you use these. Um, employee engagement and morale are going to go up, right? Because people know what's going on. They feel a sense of security and order. So this is really important. I would say, make sure you capture these. Let's go ahead, Jeff. Let's move forward. Can you hear me again? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. I, can hear, I can't see your right. lovely face anymore, but I can hear you. <laughs> Hold on. All right, now I'm back. Okay, let's see. So here is the I in simple. The more committed employees are, the more effective they are in influencing others. So if a whole group acts with determination and commitment, great numbers of people are going to pay attention. They're going to engage, 
right? So employees who are committed and empowered to take action, well, those employees are the ones who don't take discouragement seriously. They don't give up at all. They push through, right? So they set an example for those that don't have, let's see, that big C word. They don't have the confidence confidence or experience to go through the hard times um, or to hold out for the rewards of success. And depending on the type of individual you are, if you are a committed person, um, you're gonna respond differently, right? So people that are committed to an effort for a period of time, they will learn what they need to know to be more effective. People need time to try different things and to make mistakes, to fail, to figure out what works. You have to know, unfortunately, what doesn't work. Now, whether you're the person that discovers it or not, that that's up for question, but we find out what works by discovering that the other thing didn't work right? So welcome people into your team. This is a way to invite commitment. Be open and clear about your mission, your visions, and your values, right? Model commitment to your team and model commitment to yourself. You're going to have to do some self-talk when the word commitment is involved. That's in every facet of your life, not just professional, right? So give people work to do and ensure that they are clear, clear on what's expected of them. What are the results to be? And what are they empowered to do to achieve those results, right? And then listen, listen, listen. And then guess what? Listen again. Those are five key things that you need when it comes to inviting commitment. There are other key components. So let, let's jump to the next slide. <laughs> you gotta love it. You just gotta love it. Aren't they adorable? Lead by example and hold yourself accountable first, right? So you can never ask your people to do something that you don't feel comfortable doing. Lead by example and hold yourself accountable first is worth repeating. I don't know if anybody, and you guys feel free to put it in the chat, if anybody else lives by this pattern, have instructed their children by this pattern, or grew up by this pattern, or maybe all three. But as a manager, you are a pace setter of tone and performance and culture for your team. I mean, it's foundational to building a culture of trust. Remember I brought that word up earlier. If people feel like you're held accountable and there aren't any exceptions, they will follow your lead. They will follow behind you. They'll walk off a bridge behind you. Absolutely, Amy. Yes, me too. It is one of the most important leadership principles. Yes, Sarah, you are absolutely right. If you're continuously showing up to meetings late, pushing deadlines, not owning up to your mistakes, the team will follow suit and they will not trust that they will be held accountable in a fair manner. They will actually be surprised when they hear later that they missed expectations because they weren't going by them to begin with. They weren't being driven by them. So how do you demonstrate your own accountability in the marketplace? Me too, Ginger. I never asked my team to do anything that I wouldn't do myself, but that might be the military girl in me, right? So accountability to self. You have to be accountable to self. And what does that mean? Ask yourself questions, self-talk, Self-awareness is crucial for a leader. Did I work as hard as I could have? Did I set and maintain high standards for myself? Did I spend enough time doing quality work today? Did I regulate my procrastination, distractions, and temptation in order to complete my work? Jeff, we got to have this hanging up in, in the hallway, in the break room, everywhere. Did I regulate my procrastination? I love that one. 
Did I make good use of my available resources? Did I ask questions if I needed help? Did I renew and re, excuse me, did I review and re-review my work for possible errors? Did I consider best practices for my similar work? And the last one, is my work something for which I'm proud of that I would proudly show to a large global audience? Rob and I am so with you on that question. I would add today at the end and throw it right on this list because honestly, to be accountable to self and self-care, self-care is not always about going to get a massage, guys. Self-care is about taking a moment to be self-reflective, um, mindfulness, because that makes you a better leader. It makes you better for your people. And it also makes it easier for you to hold yourself accountable. Yes, 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 Janita, that, that's good. You know, take a mental Tanya, health day. We've used mm -hmm. the example before that I think is, is, very, is very appropriate for here is, is you think about the airlines. When you get on the airlines in the safety um, briefing they do before you take off, they tell you to put the um, life vest on yourself if you ever need to before you're right. anybody else around you, family, friend, because if you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to help others. And th that's Amen. exactly what Rob and others are talking about here as far as in Janetta, taking care of yourself is something that we overlook. And it's a blind spot yes. for a lot of us too, because we're all so busy. But the more we can take care of ourselves, the more we're going to be able to help others. Exactly. That is so good. Jeff, um, I don't know if you, you had mentioned you thought your camera was on, just so you know, we can't see you. All right. That is oh, so good. You're just gonna have to, I love, you're just gonna have to live with the you're just gonna have to live face? with the still picture of me, yes. Oh, I just see your phone. At least I get your voice. I'm excited about that. I love the example. You can, I don't know. Well, I guess it's just me. <laughs> oh well. Well, Let's I'm sorry see. that some of you have to see the live version of me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, but um. Well, I, for the, time's sake, I the, do think uh, you need to need to jump off the next one, though, Tanya. No, no, no. Yeah, you're fine. We're we're moving on. The yep. uh, the example of the um, the face mask too is what I thought of when you mentioned yeah. that. The accountability yep. ladder. Let's take a look at this, guys. Accountability is a personal choice to rise above one's circumstances and demonstrate the ownership necessary for achieving desired results and making it happen, basically. You're not only accountable to yourself, but to those around you. Accountability means you own it, right? So where we started out um, talking about being accountable to others and looking at self and now looking at others, where do you see yourself on this ladder, folks? Put it in the chat while we press forward. I see um, we have I'll just a say, little bit I'll just of say that here. I've seen people, I'll say that I've seen some people, given the day of the week, they might be on different points of the ladder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true. A lot of people spend time in that section there with the wait and hope excuses I can't. Now, another way to invite commitment is to use accountability framework. And that's what was mentioned earlier with, Ro I, can't, I always say it wrong, Reiki, Rocky. You're welcome, Kathy. Take care. Um, when there's a lack of clarity around who's responsible for what it makes accountability all the much harder on a team. So in fact, a Gallup study found that 50% of employees strongly indicate that they know what's expected of them at work. That's a big miss for most leading these employees. They don't. So let's look at, let's look at Racky. Responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. These roles are broken out into four levels of accountability. Those who are responsible for completing a task at hand, those who are ultimately accountable for the completion of the task or deliverable, 
This individual is also responsible for delegating the work to those who are responsible for completing it. And then consulted. These individuals are typically the subject matter experts involved, right? On task at hand. So they're involved in the specific stage of the project in the consulting and advisory capacity only. So we have informed left, and these are the individuals who are kept up to date on the project, usually next level of management. At each stage of the project, they get an update. This is usually done in the form of a one-way communication a status report. So that's what you have when you look at Reiki. Let's go on to the next one here. I, went yeah, wrong I think one of the key sure. things here is that we have to also, whatever, whatever, and that's going to be different. The RACI model is going to be different for every, every person that you engage with. So management above you is going to be at different places in RACI versus somebody that's, that's up here versus a direct report versus vendors versus whatever other people might be involved in a certain project or initiative or have a need to know. It's just going to be, it's something that you've got to map out for different folks. And it's gonna be one person might be an R, an A, a C, and an I all uh, on different projects for you or different uh, different connections to you. So it's never one person's in a bucket and that's all they ever are. Right, exactly right. You, I mean, you have to establish measurements for each task too, once you do figure out who has the ownership, rightfully so. It's okay, Sarah, you're so very welcome. We're rolling right along here, trying to keep up with things, but um, we appreciate you coming by. Here's the P in simple. I'm hoping we can get to the L and the E. Every conversation you have either builds trust or chips it away. I brought that up very early in our conversation because trust is very important. Positive reinforcement is a powerful source of fuel that energizes people to try harder, to persist longer and to overcome difficulties. We all know someone or we are that one that refuses to give up and that when we receive regular recognition and praise, it has an impact on us. Some of those impacts are to increase um, the individual's productivity, right? Um, to increase engagement in, uh, with their colleagues, to be more likely to stay. You hear people with an organization 10, 20 years, um, they receive higher loyalty and satisfaction scores from customers when it comes to customer service. Um, and they have better safety records and less accidents and injuries. Nothing has a greater impact on an employee than when recognition comes from their direct supervisor as well. So trust, that P, positive reinforcement, it prevents and promotes a lot. Yes, the next one. Let's move forward. You with me, Jeff? Let's go to how to, yeah, there we go. How to give feedback. Ask for permission to give feedback. Hey, do you have a minute for some quick feedback? Sure, of course. Then state what you observed. After work yesterday, I noticed you didn't help the rest of the crew do cleanup. Um, is way better than saying, after work yesterday, I noticed you were being lazy. Not gonna yield the results you want, right? Explain the impact so they understand what the impact is of their behavior. When you explained our return policy to the customer, it looked like she became more irate is a better way of saying, I noticed you were pissed off. I noticed you pissed off the customer. Not good. Pause and see the other persons or ask for their reaction and see how that goes. That's just a better way. Mm -hmm. They are game changers. You're right, Robin. So here's the L in simple. Yeah. yeah. So take a look at this picture, guys. What's going to happen? What is going to happen here? Huh. Link to the consequences. If you kick someone in the back at the edge of a ledge, they're going to fly forward, right? 
there are always consequences to your actions. Your greatest source of power for creating a compelling consequence is your ability to change how people feel. And that's, that's something that Maya Angelou dropped in me at that very young, you know, people will always remember how you made them feel as opposed to what you say, right? Yep. Let's go forward. Yep. So we are wrapping up quickly here. Um, empowering right, uh, your employees. Here it is. Yes, yeah. Jeff. Sorry, I skipped you wanted the slide. To something? Oh, okay. No, I, I was just, can you, I'm, I'm good. You're good. Okay. You can do that by empowering your employees, right? Um, as I said earlier, um, empowerment is, oh, it's a life source. And empowerment, according to, to the dictionary, empowerment is an act or action of empowering someone or something. The granting of the power, right, or authority per, to perform an act or duty. So the state of being empowered to do something, the power and the right of, or authority to do it, if you give that to an employee, they feel like they can do anything as long as the parameters are in place. They feel strong, they feel trusted, they feel they become loyal to you. They want to make not only what they do done well, but they're seeking recognition from you and your attention to a job well done. And I'm so sorry, we, are, we have run right into two o'clock. Jeff, what do you wanna do about that? I apologize because bummer. <laughs> Yes, it is I a great tool that, to uh, take. Attention. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna send out the deck. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this deck to Michael so that everybody can have a, a PDF copy of this, and you can see the last couple slides. Um, but that that we're not gonna get through. But we just didn't get to the E as far as evaluating effectiveness. But um, you you'll get the slides. I'm gonna send that to him right after that we end here, so you guys can see this. Um, there was only a couple more slides. Um, so I think that, uh, yeah. I apologize that we got started a little late today and that I've had some technical issues with my, my audio, but, uh, oh, Tanya, you're so you did a well great done. job. Well, I couldn't have done it without my team. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> and you guys for participating. You're... Thank you so much, Janita and all, all right. of you. you guys have... And please, once again, follow, um, Connect with Tanya or myself on social. We're both there and we can best definitely, if you want to talk more about this, both of us are around uh, to talk more about this. And there's some bonus content that was in here that we can, uh, you'll get this in some of the slot. You know, I'll, I'll put some of this information in the, in the uh, follow-up email with that Michael's going to send out to everyone. Um, and just a reminder that uh, we've got two more this year, two more uh, events. We've got building excellence and everything and celebrating the wins. Um, with the 22, 2023 20, lineup coming soon. So um, if you have more questions, Tanya and I are both available to, for, you know, to, to, to answer any questions or give perspective um, at, at any time. You can follow up with us, shoot us an email, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, and, yeah, uh, you can but find otherwise, me everywhere. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you for your time, everyone. Tanya, thank you for your time today. And we'll thank get you so we'll, much. I, 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 you guys have a good rest of the day. Take care. Thank you, Jerry.